Amen. Amen. God bless. Let me let you over. Let's go straight to the word because I'm not going to be long. Are you enjoying the Monday morning stretch? I'm not going to tell you. Let's read Luke 24. Are you booking your Luke at 24? Verse 13. Verse 13. Luke 24, Revelation verse 13. And then that very day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were walking with each other about, they were talking to each other about all these things which had taken place while they were walking and discussing it. Jesus himself came up and began walking with them. But their eyes were miraculously prevented from recognizing him. Then Jesus asked them, what are you discussing with one another as you walk along? And they stood still looking broken hearted. One of them named Cleopas answered him, are you the only stranger visiting Jerusalem who is unaware of the things which have happened here in these recent days? He asked, what things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, powerful indeed, and wed in the sight of God and all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced, sentenced to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it, that it was he who was going to redeem Israel and set our nation free. Indeed, besides all this, it is the third day since these things happened. And also some of the women among us shocked us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and they did not find his body. Then they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just exactly as the women had said. But they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, O oh, foolish men and slow of heart to trust and believe in everything that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and only then to enter his glory? Then, let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Go on. Bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today, I want us to analyze some things that we are reading here. And to learn. Read today. Well, I was learning this this week. I, I found what makes us to fail to recognize Christ. King What makes us to fail to see? King And I found that is the lack of Jesus character in our lives. Retailelwa ka mogwa wa Christ Jesus maphelong a rena. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Morana wa rena Jesus Christ. Went to the Christ so that we live just write lack of the character of our Lord Jesus Christ. In my life, you will remember. You will remember that this is a topic that belongs to you. It's something that always you will remember. I cannot do as he did. Because there's a lack of character of him in you. 
You remember the Bible says when Paul was speaking, the spirit Jesus. If it lives in you. In other words, the spirit that was Jesus it's oh, the spirit that was living in Jesus. If it lives in you, it will also give you life. So you don't have life until don't you have a certain spirit. Or oh, the life you're living correspond with the spirit you have inside. But here we are reading People have taken a journey of discouragement. But because of discouragement, they found a way out. There are many journeys that people take because they are discouraged. Decisions that they take because they are discouraged. On the road, the Bible says they were discussing. And they end up to say we were hoping. In other words, they are hopeless now. And the Bible says when Jesus appeared, their eyes were blind miraculously. In other words, when there was no miracle of making them to blind, not to see clear. This, this shows that these people we see. It is needed a miracle to make them blind. To extend that, when Jesus appeared there, they could not understand, is this Jesus? They could not recognize him. There are times whereby we are meeting people that we cannot recognize. We cannot see them in spirit. But I found the character of Jesus. When it's lacking, blindness becomes our problem. When the character of Jesus is lacking, Short-sighted becomes our pushing. Today, God is going to make you to understand that you are given everything. You are the one who is limiting yourself. Jesus, when he went to the cross, he was to give you everything. You are the one who limits yourself. The life of Jesus, if it's in you, the spirit of God is in you. You are supposed to identify. You are supposed to understand people around you. You are supposed to understand the situation. You are supposed to remember the scriptures too. Because the spirit of God will make you to remember the scriptures. But the Bible says they were Hopeless. They even said we were hoping that he will be the one. But because of what happened to you, we are no longer hoping. I don't know if you are hearing that. Look, he said, he asked what things and they replied the things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet. Now they put Jesus they say now he's a prophet because other prophets died. But other prophets were killed. And Jesus and then you know, Jesus. says the things about Jesus of Nazareth was a prophet's power for indeed and word in the sight of God and, and they explained the chief Priest, Look when God says, you are foolish. You are foolish. Why are you so fool? Fools like this. I was reading this, I realized many times we become fools. When I was reading this, I found that 
Many times we take journeys. When we reach there, we redo our journey. And displacement becomes zero. You travel there. When your eyes are open, you realize your journey was useless. It's better you come back where you belong. We have been trying many things that we moved out. When we are there, we realize what we are doing is zero. It's better we go back. But it is done by disciples, not agents. Because of the lack of character. Lack of the character. I want to tell you one of the lack that is affecting us as a church. Can I tell you? We talk too much. We talk too much. This is the lack that makes us to talk too much. Is when you are cold, you talk too much. Talk too much. These disciples were discussing things that they were supposed to search from the scripture. To extend that their faith in the scriptures was destroyed. They talk to Tashabazel. The reasons why God can speak you. You talk to. The character of Jesus, which we are going to learn here, he was a silent man. Jesus could not talk if it's not of the will of God. Jesus could not just talk. Unless if it is the will of God. If this, is the we are this is the character that is affecting us. This is the problem we, we are so much divided. This is the problem that today the church is growing. This is the problem that today you cannot hear from God because you heard from people. This is the problem that today you can't get revelation because you have got more informers. And we talk too. The Lord went there as a person who knows nothing. What are you talking about when he knows what are you talking about? But he knows. He reached there. What are you talking about? And later he says, you are fools. The scripture said this. He reached there. What are you talking about? Now you will understand the reason why God cannot bless many of you. Because when people are talking their things, you join to talk there. The Lord reached there and said, what are you talking about? And they explain, hey, you don't know, you don't know anything. You know what, what, what? He listened to them. The Bible says he spoke with them about the scriptures. It is time now that we cancel the talking. We bring the word of God. If we want to go far from this Good Friday, let's cancel the talking. We start to develop the character of Jesus. Where we are silenced. I don't know if you're hearing me. What if what you know is all lies? Because you will never know the one who makes any container until you ask the one who created it. You will never know me until you ask the one who created it. We are spending time Talking about what we don't know, Jesus says, you are fools. So I'm here, this is your topic. Ask what is it that you talk more about? Say, answer me. 
I just want to show you from the scripture. Look at the book of Luke 23. Verse 8 there. Luke 23 verse 8. When Herod saw Jesus, uh -huh. he was exceedingly pleased. He had wanted to see him for a long time because of what he had heard about him and was hoping to see some miraculous sign, even something spectacular done by him. Mm -hmm. Carry on. And he questioned him at some length. But Jesus made no reply. The chief priests and the scribes were standing there, continually accusing him heartedly. And Herod with his soldiers, after treating him with contempt and mocking and ridiculing him, dressed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him back to Pilate. Are now, you, are you reading verse Amen. There? Herod heard about Jesus. Here it was the time Mone where the na. Lord was supposed to prove Mone his na. point. So that Kijuang. he must not go to the cross. He heard Putile. that, oh, this is the man. Again. Today I will question you. The Lord could answer in Morena, a way that no one will be afraid to escape to crucify. And that could really cancel God's will. The Lord had answers Morena, to Herod. But those answers were not good because though were true answers that he can say, it can change the mind of Herod. And from there when he's convinced, Pilate will be afraid to judge him. And the Bible says when he was questioned, he kept silent. He kept silent. And the Bible says Bible the Jews were accusing him of many things. But he kept silent. This is the character of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. The Jews were saying, this man said this, that man said this, but he kept quiet. I mean, you have not been accused, but you talk too much. Here, you are in the point of death. Jesus was at the point where he needed defense. But by his character, he allowed God to Jesus take control. Jesus no knew very well that if he can try to speak the will of the Father will be affected. Many times by our ways we have affected God's will in our lives. God's plan, plan is to make sure that he fight for you when you are silent. But you spoke words that makes the Lord to go The Lord God wants people who will have this character. When people insult you, they say all kinds of evil things. The Bible says rejoice. It didn't say answer. It says rejoice. We have not reached a level are whereby so we are contrary to the wishes of the opposers. Because the wishes of the opposers, they want to talk. So that they judge you by what you are saying. And they will say, I'm not defending myself. I'm not saying anything. If I speak, this man will take a wrong decision. But it will affect the plan I'm given by my father God. Listen, 
God loves you and he becomes happy when the opposers are screaming against you. When they are doing what they can do. But you keep silent. From today, don't defend yourself. It's the character of our Lord Jesus Christ. Tasa, don't defend yourself. It is the character of our Lord Jesus Christ. When people say you are ugly, smile. But feel, no smile. Mm. You are going nowhere. nowhere. Oh, Thank feel, you. Oh, okay, we are leaving you. God we bless you. Well, there was a time where Una I got a revelation. There was a time where I got a revelation. God says to me, I don't see what I'm doing. This revelation I told my mom. When people leave you, don't fight this. But just check what will happen to them. Don't say anything. Check. They are leaving you because they spoke against you. Now they have to fulfill it by leaving you. You keep quiet and carry on preaching the gospel. I say thank you, Lord. I began to watch. I was like, hey, yeah, it's possible. Yeah, it's possible. Hey, Thank God, yes. Hey, I'm I'm seeing it. It. Believe me, so that you lose all. You are not losing all because of me. No. You are losing all because of your lifestyle. So God cannot allow you to work with me. So you criticize me, you leave me. So that when you fail, then it won't be my God. I don't know if you're hearing me. It is time that if you are standing right with God, you allow those who are leaving you to leave you. Don't fight them. Just be silent. And see the hand of the Lord upon you. Lord. I don't know if you're hearing me. This is my revelation. I never, I never wanted to criticize anybody. I never wanted to speak anything because it will hinder God's plan. It will hinder the will of God. It is time now that you stop convincing people to be with you. There are some people that are supposed to leave you for the glory of God. There are some people that are supposed to go away. God will never speak with you when they are around. I don't know if you are hearing me. But as I leave me and watch me after two years. Leave me and watch me after three years. Leave me and watch me after three years. You don't need to why people are rejecting me. Why? Why? No. The Lord is with you. They must leave you. Because where you are going, they cannot reach. You, you, you need to be silenced. I don't know if you're hearing me. When the Lord wanted to do something, he told the Israelites, I hey, hey, you people here, be still and sing. Because the Lord does not work when you are talking. He, 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 he works when you are believing. If you are crumbling, hey. No, we cannot reach the hey, hey, We are going to die here. What? Oh. And the Lord said, hey, Moses. Hey, hey, keep quiet. Today, the Egyptians you see, see, you will never see them again. This trouble that you are seeing, you just keep quiet. Be still and see the salvation from God. You are very dangerous when you are quiet. And Satan when he's challenging you, and you keep quiet, you are very dangerous to him. But when you start to cry, you are showing weakness. You are showing you don't trust him. You don't trust God more. It is time that you keep silent. If you are hearing me say, it. I want to show you something also. We, we spoke about Matthew 15. Matthew 15. Verse 21. You see, the character of our Lord. Verse 21. 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 To the dis district of Tyre and Sidon. Mm. And a Canaanite woman from the district came out and began to cry out urgently, saying, 
Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. Mm -hmm. Messiah, my daughter is cruelly possessed by a demon. But he did not say a word in answer to her. And his disciples came and asked him repeatedly, send her away because she keeps, on, she keeps shouting out after us. He answered, I was commissioned by God and said only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Can you see the character of our Lord? Hallelujah. He kept quiet. To extend that the disciples were disturbed. I said, this noise is too much. The Lord, please deal with this case. And the Lord was quiet. What makes the Lord to speak that day is when she worshipped. When she worshipped, the Lord spoke and said, you don't deserve this. This belongs to the children of God. What will make the Lord to speak? His touch only when the things are concerning God. The Lord won't just talk. His His touch only when the things are concerning God. When she kneeled down, as she kneeled down before God, he says, oh, you won't get these things because you have to get through me. Because you are not part of the generation that God wants. And the answer she gave was showing that she understands she is not. But the power of God is not limited. She was showing that the power of God here is not limited. Jesus says, yes, you are right. By what you said, the cramps shows that the power of God can reach anywhere. Uh, I don't know if you are hearing me. Jesus could not just speak. Jesus could not speak. All the time. It is time now that we check why we don't move mountains by our faith. Why we don't speak with the fig trees to become dry is because we are talking too much. And what we are talking is not scripture. I don't know if you are hearing me. Jesus didn't just talk. He didn't just talk. In fact, I was speaking with my son. I was saying, listen to this song. Play it. Play it. I'm sure you might have played the song yeah, almost five hours. Because I listened to the song and play it the whole night. When I'm busy there, it will start when I'm sitting. Are you hearing me? From there, because it is one thing. And from the word of God, I'll end up standing. I'll end up enjoying it. Because the things of Jesus needs you to enjoy it. Need you to enjoy it. Need you to enjoy them. Don't entertain yourself with thoughts that are there against the will of God. Which are contrary from the, from the word. Whatever comes your way, if it does not edify you, don't make it an issue. If you are hearing me say amen. When I was meditating about this message, I found that that's the reason why we don't dream. We're supposed to be dreaming the whole service. We were supposed to be dreaming who was going to meet us. You don't know that the words of this world makes your mind tired. But the, the words from God revive your soul and make you to have joy unspeakable. The 
reasons why now you are so tired. The reasons why you cannot cram anything difficult even to hold a verse is because you had too much that you need to crush. You had stories. You had doubt. You had shame failure. You had all. But you didn't hear it. One time I found that one man was saying, I don't know why when I preach and there's no power. And he was told that it's because your message 55% is history. history. 55% is history. And other things are jokes. But the word of God is so small. That's why the power of God cannot manifest in your life. And that's what we are doing. We spend time making jokes. We spend time talking. You know, you know when I was hearing this message, I said, I'm going to shorten my, my, my jokes. Because I joke too much. I said, no, nowadays I'm going to be silent and preach the word of God. Because these jokes are affecting the spirit of God and the power of God is not reaching where it's supposed to reach. I don't know if you are hearing me. I told myself that no. If to me no is no now. Yes is no. When I come here, like what I've been doing, I've been preaching the word of God as it is. Preaching the word of God as it is. Because I found, I discovered the reason why people are not powerful today is because they are talking stories. And these stories will come to an end. When you stand up to preach, preach the word. When you are Christian, quote the word. And you will be powerful. If you hear me say it. Let's read this one. Can we read John 8? Verse 3. Here and now, the scribes and Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery. They made her stand in the center of the court. And they said to him, teacher, this woman had been caught in the very act of adultery. Carry on. And now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such woman to death. So what do you say to do with her? What is your sentence? They said this to test him, hoping that they would have grounds for accusing him. But Jesus stopped, stooped down and began writing on the ground with his finger. However, when they persisted in questioning him, he straightened up and said, He who is without any sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Are you hearing that? Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ silence was the best way of getting revenge. The more he silenced, is the more he get the right answer. The Bible says, they accuse him, they carry on talking, the Bible says, when they persist, the Bible says, when they persist, he was, he stood and down to write down. Think about someone says, are you coming from town? You just say, yes, yes, yes. You don't even know why he's asking you. Jesus could not just answer questions. Yes, Jesus, yes I am coming from town. He will just question, why are you asking that question? Jesus knew that everything does not happen per chance. It is there either to put him down or to lift him up. 
if someone approach him and ask him a question, he will just take his time. Have you ever find someone taking his time? I kneel down to write down. When he was busy writing, he found a revelation. All these people are sinners. And they are protecting someone. So whoever has not done anything, they look at themselves. All of them left. Jesus was like that. Some people, even nowadays, when they ask you questions, they are recording. Other people are there to find what you have said, to use it again. Even when you are waking, just be a hard worker, don't talk. Some of you, you have spoken a lot and sold out your business plan. And someone took it and ran with it and ended up being successful in front of you. It is time you keep silent until God say talk. The Lord kept quiet. He kept quiet. Let me show you from the scripture. I don't want to talk my things. I just want you to see this. Yes. Uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 22. You hear Jesus what he speaks. Mm-hmm. Verse 22. Verse 22. And as he continued on, they all were speaking well of him and were in awe and were wondering about the words of grace which were coming from his lips. And they were saying, is this not Joseph's son? So he said to them, if you will not, sorry, you will no doubt quote this proverb to me. Physicians, heal yourself. Whatever miracles that we had were done by you in Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. Then he said, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, no prophet is welcome in his hometown. But in truth, I say to you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah. When the sky was closed up for three years and six months, when a great famine came over all the land, and yet Elijah was not sent by the Lord to the single one of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a widow who was a widow. To a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet. And not one of them were cleansed by being healed. Except Naaman the Syrian. As they heard this thing about God's grace to these two Gentiles. The people in the synagogue were filled with a great rage. And they get up and drove him out of the city. And led him to the crest of the hill of which their city had been built. In order to hurl him down the cliff. But passing miraculously through the cloud, he went on his way. Did you hear that? Amen. You know why I'm reading this? I it's wanted to hear that, that many people were praising you. By the words you are talking. Soon they will change to kill you. Jesus. After he preached the message. And he said these words are fulfilled to your hearing. He said look at the gracious words. Whose son is this one? When Jesus said, at the time of Elijah, this happened. By the time of Elijah, this happened. 
by my time, you will just say amen. amen. But soon, you will change. Jesus was saying that you can preach a wonderful message. Many people will come to say, your message was powerful. But the ones who are saying, your message was dot. Many people who come to praise you are very dangerous to me. So you don't speak to be heard. You don't speak because you want favor. You speak because it is the will of God. Have you ever preached someone come and say, I, I could not sleep. That message was penny. You already have enemies. Either you can have a little pride, distraction, or you'll be confused in the next message. It is time now that you remain silent when the praises come your way. Remain silent when praises come your way. Paul says it is no longer your knees, but Christ. Let's praise him. Let's praise Christ. It's not me who lives. Many pastors, they fallen. Because of praises. You know, sometimes you just say, mm. hey, you know, your sons, they prophesy. Director say, hey, they insult, they insult him. They insult him. Because such people, they are the ones who will pull my sons to the cave. Throw them there. Look at the gracious words. This boy. Whose son is this boy? And you people, you want to be praised. And that's why God will leave you to your power. I found that I will never allow anybody who praise me. In fact, the day you praise me is the day I hate you. I run away from you. My hatred is running away from you. Because otherwise you give me another praise. Give me another praise. But if you are you, you, are, you are saying, God is faithful. You know, this message was this. I say, let's praise him. Let's praise him. It is not the time that people must praise him. It is the time that they see God through If you are hearing me shout, hallelujah. hallelujah. Let me show you another scripture. Ecclesiastes 10, verse 12 to 10, 12. Verse 12 to 14. Verse 12 to 14. Ecclesiastes 10, 12 to 14 says, The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious and win him favor, but the lips of a fool consume him. The beginning of the talking of foolishness and the end of his talk is wicked madness. Yet, the fool multiplies words, though no man knows what will happen and who can tell him what will come after he is gone. The fools mm. multiply words. Can you read the second stanza of that verse? This one, let me begin. Yet. Though no man uh -huh. knows what will happen and who can tell him what will come after he is gone. If you want to sit with a fool, hey. if, the fool will be talking non-stop. Ah, Fools multiply words. It is easy to discern. The Bible says in the multiple of ways, there is sin. There is wrongdoing there. They talk and ah, talk. We need Christians who are busy praying. In their heart. When people are talking, busy praying, you will see a spirit that is pushing the people who are talking. If you are hearing me say, Amen. Can you just read Colossians 4, verse 5? Are you over Colossa 4? Huh? 
We are five. We are surrounded with many fools. Hey, you wanna read it? Can you just read verse five? Verse five says, <laughs> "Conduct yourself with wisdom in your intention, sorry, interactions with outsiders, meaning non-believers. Make the most of each opportunity, treating it as something precious. Mm. Let your speech at all times be gracious." And pleasant, seasoned with salt, so that you will know how to answer each one. What question you? Who question you? You have interactions. You speak with people you are working with. <laughs> Don't forget the scriptures. Don't forget the word of God. Make your speech to be seasoned with salt, which is the word. Be ready to be able to answer. If you don't read the Bible, you are going to answer. You have interactions with the outsiders. They are there to attack you. They are there to make your faith to go down no, no, by speaking no, doubt, no, by speaking no, failure, no, by speaking lack. No, you are a child of God who no, speaks no, faith. I once told you that I was, no, I was in an aeroplane. No, and God gave me a message that I'm going to preach in Abuja. I didn't even know that those flights were Abuja. And I met a lady holding some. Since the flight took off, she's been like. She was having something long, which was a little cross. And she was disturbing me. And disturb good. And I said this thing several times. Yeah. And I says, what are you doing? She, she says, this place they form. I'm praying. I told I'm her that I've been given a message. This is the message I've been given. That I must preach in Abuja. I will reach there. Many times, there are some storms and winds when you are going somewhere. Don't ever think you won't reach there. Remember what the Lord says. If the Lord says you will reach there, you will reach there. Don't look at the trouble. Don't look at the haters. Don't look at the, haters. Don't look at the opposition. Remember what the Lord said. I will reach there. In fact, Mama was telling me that there was a demon in church was saying this church will die this year. It has been said since I started the ministry. When I pray with the demon, they will say, we will stop you. We will stop you. I was a young man. The demon said, we will stop you. Your church will die. I said, ah. Demons, they sing one song. Is you supposed to listen? Who knows the word of God? No. You are a child of God. They make noise. The noise you are hearing will never stop you. As long as the Lord says you will reach there, I see you reaching there. Sometimes things will just happen when you're working. Sometimes support will be cut off. Don't forget the Lord wants to take you there. You know, you know, you know the Lord, the Bible says the Lord, when he was going to the cross, he was like, he was like a sheep. He was just like a sheep. Did you ever kill the sheep? Sheep will just look at you. Just look at you. Look at you like this. He was so quiet inside. He was saying, your will, your will, your will must be done, your will. I mean, when you're not opening your mouth, 
Satan fears you. Satan and he was unto you. And you Rise up. Now. We are because he is bigger than the one unto the world. It's time you keep silent about any challenge you are facing. And remember the Lord. The Lord, the Lord will take me there. I see the Lord will take you somewhere. I say he's taking you somewhere. This year, don't talk about failure. When you look at the opposition or the situation you are facing, no, the Lord is with you. Remember the scripture. Remember the scripture. When the Bible says the disciples went to Jesus when he was asleep and questioned why it's like you don't care that we are going to die. Jesus said, where is your faith? Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Whatever you are facing, where is your faith? You will go there in Jesus' name. You will be promoted in the name of Jesus. Victory is your portion in the name of Jesus. It is time you forget the failure of last week. Of last week. It's time to forget what you have experienced and begin to quote the scripture. If the Lord said, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Yes, I can see myself. I'm losing a car. But the Lord said, I'm blessed. I can see people rejecting me. But the Lord said, I'm blessed. I'm with the Lord. I'm walking with the Lord. No one will stop me. I'm walking with the Lord. If you carry on speaking one thing, soon the testimony will come your way. If you hear me shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's time we must have character. Jesus.